Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tammy Tucky Show. My name is Tammy Tucky, and it's good to see all of you. Before we start this evening, our special guest has something special that's premiering on November 18th. It's a new documentary on Disney Plus called Mickey, the Story of a Mouse. So let's take a look at the teaser trailer. During the last few years, we've ventured into a lot of different fields. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing. It was all started by a mouse. Hi, all started by a mouse. Simple circles. Oh, oh gosh! Mickey is a thing we all share. There aren't many of those around. Wow. So let's welcome the director himself, Mr. Jeff Momberg. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you this evening? I'm glad you're on the show. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. What part of the world are you? Philly. Billy, all the way out here with the cheesesteaks and nice. Rocky and the pretzels. <laughs> yeah, and that great, great uh, football team, great baseball team this year. I well, yeah, we did pretty well with the with the Phillies. I wish we had stayed a little bit longer, but you know, we we did we made it so far. But we think maybe the Eagles might be our our oh, Super yeah. Bowl champs. Yeah. <laughs> so we're hoping. Well, we'll I guess we'll see what happens. So yeah. we're hoping. <laughs> But, you know, I, I was watching your documentary the other night and I I really love it because I think a lot of people perceive Mickey to be in so many different ways. So I love that you got the chance to kind of tell his story in, in such a unique way because you, you are delving into the history of Mickey himself. But mm -hmm. didn't this take like a couple of years? Like, did you start back in 2019? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would wow. say both took a couple of years and then was interrupted for a couple of years with COVID, you know? So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, but you know, it was on some level, it was nice to have that extra time to work on other, work on other aspects of it and things like that. Um, but yeah. you know, it definitely, as you remember it, COVID definitely slowed things down. So. I know we were all like, what do we do? And I, I, I guess maybe it might've been a little bit okay for you because you could do more history. Yeah. The time just to sit and yeah. watch videos and see what you've missed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'd had, we had, we hadn't shot everything, but we had enough that we could kind of work on that. And, you know, did a lot of phone, phone interviews with people of like, just to get their point of view on things so that we knew how we wanted to shape things. You know, it was a really interesting time. Our, producer Megan Walsh uh, would get like a portable audio recorder and mm -hmm. send that around from subject to subject, you know, and, and made a video of how to turn it on and, you know, the <laughs> zoom recorders. And um, so, you know, trying to come up with creative solutions to kind of keep it moving and things like that. Um, the old school way of doing yeah, it, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Not this way, the old school way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's mail it snail mail and then just record it, which yeah. I find is some more, more per I guess it's more personal. And mm -hmm. I, a lot of people like that. I think that's why podcasts are so, I guess, entertaining is we just hear it and we can picture whatever we want. So <laughs> No, exactly. The, yeah, you're right. I love listening to podcasts because it's just two people back and forth you know it's, it's nice, nice conversation yeah and nothing like nothing and sometimes you don't even need to put on <laughs> pajamas because you, you just put on pajamas and in, in technicality right. and you don't need to put on like a full business suit so that's that's a plus <laughs> that i like to that i like for podcasting too but you know i was i was I, one of the things that popped to me at the very beginning was we've all heard the quote it was all started by mouse by walt disney but you show the actual footage of him saying it, which I had never seen before. I was like, where did he find this? And in such clear, crisp, you know, quality, it was, it was beautiful. So were you, were you able to go in the archives just to see this material that had never been probably released? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in some case they would retransfer things and stuff like that. So it was really interesting, you know, I mean, there's so much material and there's so much Mickey material over the years. So we <laughs> would be constantly, uh, you know, going through these logs and, you know, trying to find shots of things that we thought existed, but, you know, it's that wonderful kind of archival research, but in this case, it was all through, you know, the Disney archives, which was just its own sort of like weird, wonderful place. You know, um, you see how they, in the case of animation at that place called the animation research library that you see in the film, um, you know, how much they value, just the hand drawn lines of 
the old shorts and stuff, you know, I mean, there's just rooms and rooms of that original animation material. So they were the same way with archival material, video material, things like that. It's so interesting because you, with, with you saying that, um, a lot of people don't get to have firsthand seeing it in front of them. You usually see it in footage and anything like that. But um, a friend of mine, do you remember the great movie ride at Walt Disney World? The one you, mm -hmm. you go through the movies, right? Yeah. So my friend told me a story. He worked on the attraction. He, he was Imagineer. And um, they couldn't use the tornado footage from Wizard of Oz. So they switched out Fantasia, right? Uh -huh. But he was able to get access to the original animation. Oh, from wow. when they did Fantasia. And he was like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't yeah. believe they gave it to me. I was the same way when they, you see it a little bit in the movie where they flip through uh, Mickey skipping in Fantasia with the hat on. Yes. And they flipped that for me. And I mean, all the audio is unusable because it's me just sort of, ah, you know, like making noises. <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> you just, I mean, you can't get any closer to that kind of like classic Mickey than him in Fantasia to so to see the pencil lines and the erasing on that was oh. just you know heaven for me I thought that was incredible this might be a weird question did it have a unique smell to it because I, I love old things that have really unique smells. yeah no completely it had that library kind of smell I mean we're talking <laughs> about paper and you know for a long time it's in the animation research library now which is temperature controlled and yes. very well organized for a long time that stuff sat at the bottom of the animation building and yeah. it's something they called the morgue which is a term not from you know the way we think of morgues but uh <laughs> the way newspapers would think of morgues is they would keep copies in basements or whatever in something they called the morgue so you know it had picked up some sense over the years for sure you know but it did have that wonderful like when you go into a good library or you know any kind of library and you have that smell of books you know or if you crack open an old book yeah definitely i love that question that's uh well, it's I, we should have had like a scratch and sniff component to that yeah. you know, every time <laughs> we go in the research library you smell, you it. smell that yeah but no i think uh i was reading the other day um completely apropos of almost nothing except what you're talking about is uh apparently ray bradbury when he was writing fahrenheit 451 if he was losing inspiration, he'd be at, um, I could be getting a little of this wrong, but he would be at LA Public Library mm -hmm. and he would be typing as fast as he could. Uh, and it was on a machine where it was queuing you with a dime to use the typewriter. So he'd be going real fast. And if he would lose it, he would go to the stacks, pull out a book, smell the book and go back and keep writing. And I'm like, wow, that really tells you what the sense of smell can do for creativity, you know, it so. transports you back to yeah, that, to that moment. Yeah. When I hear, I don't know about you, when I smell, um, cut grass, it's just like childhood just hits me in the face. Yeah. Mine is like the pavement smell. Like when oh, it's burning, because like we didn't have a playground at my school, so we just had the pavement. <laughs> so oh, I wow. smell it and I'm like, oh, I love it. And so it's you're saying fun. when the pavement gets hot? Yes. Yeah. Like, okay. You know that like the black you know what I'm talking about? Adam? Yes. Uh -huh, it's like yeah, that. I know what that one you mean. Yeah, that's cool. And and as a kid, it's so weird. So I have a clip. I thought it it would be fun. Um, I hope this is not like too self centered. But I have a clip of me with Mickey back in actually 22 years ago. So Great. and I want to I'll, I'll connect this this the smell the smell to it right here. So okay. here we go. <laughs> that's my little sister. <laughs> I'm the one in the pink. Yeah, I'm the one in the pink. So this is at the animation studios. And we were like the first ones to be there. So that was at the animation back lot where MGM Studios was, right? So the smell to me that kicks out is um, after the Voyage of the Little Mermaid show, they had that cute little princess store. And they used to have these candy necklaces that you would buy. And anytime I smell a candy necklace, I'm like, I, I'm taken right back to that moment of being in that area and meeting the characters. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's funny that you say that. Now, it's gonna be a whole episode about smell. But, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I went, when I was shooting this, I went to Main Street in Anaheim, Main, mm -hmm. uh, Disneyland. And yeah. I was like, okay, what is it? You know, you're trying to figure it out. 
they are piping in serious sugar smells oh. all through that place with that carnation stand yeah. in the corner and that and i'm like of course that's brilliant <laughs> you know? it makes it immerses you in it yeah. and you're like oh i'd love it i remember the, the the rumor is that that going to universal the et ride they switched out the scent of the forest so people are are just crazed now they're like no we love the scent of the original forest wow. and i was like no because that's what i remember too i hadn't been there in 20 years and i just went back and what i remember was the smell not even wow. the ride just the smell it's like it's very weird it can really it can transform. See, I've you. seen Disney podcasts about the sounds because that's easy, but you need to figure out how to do a smell podcast. Yes, that, like a Ooh. Disney smell podcast. That the would... best smells. <laughs> yeah, totally. And and you know what? It, it, you it, with your documentary, you do highlight how pop culture has made fun of Mickey, or kind of like in a in a in a loving way, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to know if you had seen this footage. This is actually from also the animation studios um, with uh, Robin Williams and Walt Walter Cronkite. So here's a clip from Back to Neverland. Oh, I can be anything. I can be just a tiny person. Or make my eyes really big. Or maybe have legs that are real long. I can even be you, Walter Cronkite. Now hold on there. Can I do this? I'm happy. I'm grumpy. I'm dopey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm a corporate symbol. Hold it. Hold it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, almost made the cut too, but um, I it I think a different clip kind of covered that ground. The, the oh yeah, thing. So yes. I didn't do it, but yeah, <laughs> I know that clip really well. I think that was, I'm pretty sure Eric Goldberg told me that to start on Robin Williams as the genie, he took Robin Williams. Now I don't know. I'm mixing up. No, it, but, it was. They kind of based it the way he's dressed in the short film from '89 mm -hmm. is the way Genie's dressed at the end of Aladdin. Oh, it's the same outfit. So they did. They did kind of. Uh, I know Jerry who uh, directed the film, uh -huh. and uh, he said that uh, Robin laughed really loudly at that specific joke. It wasn't oh, even something cool. he wrote, you know. Yeah, right. And and Roy E. Disney and Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg all proved on the joke, so that was even better. That's funny. <laughs> But yeah, like, I love that. I think that's great. Do, do you find that? Um, do you do you do you find that a lot of people when you're going through all the this, all of these pieces of footage, do you feel like a lot of people really embrace the fact of what Mickey is and and his personality and and just kind of love it, but also like to make fun of it a little bit too much? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I think one of the things is everybody has a different relationship to Mickey. Yeah. You know, it's like and. I, I get it with people who are like, oh, he's just a corporate shill. And yeah, that's, he's, he's a company, he's a very effective, you know, company logo. Um, yes. But I just happen to be on the side of the fence of like, I think he's as close to joy as we're ever going to get in a yeah. symbol that we all share. I've seen my daughter go, you know, I saw the look on her face. The other camera angle from that shot you just showed of you and Mickey and she was ecstatic and like there's so few things in the world that are like that so I told you know I'm of two minds with everything yeah I'm a Gemini I'm a documentary filmmaker like I love things that have two things in it that are moving around together you know um mm -hmm. but at the end of the day I just think Mickey you on some level you just can't beat him no. you know I think no. he's just it's uh, I can I see him every day and it, it makes me smile and laugh. And, you know, I just who else can you say that? And it's from 100 years ago. What? You know, so it's like that was sort of the, the basis of a lot of wanting to do the film was just wanting to get inside all of that because it's just so peculiar and kind of we all sort of share it. And I know. think it, it was interesting that you 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 do touch on some subjects that are, are a little bit sore. Um, for me, I had an unusual childhood in which my, my, my dad had actual film film. So he had mm -hmm. 16 millimeter and eight millimeter and 35 millimeter. So I did see Mickey shorts that had things that were um, censored later on. And so seeing some of the clips again and some things I've never seen, but then also some stories about Mickey's relationship to what was happening during the Holocaust 
um, just another reason for our listeners and and anybody who's watching to take a look because you 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 have you show the good and the bad, but also understanding the time period as well too. Because I think a lot of people completely forget that and they just want to wash it away and and put it away and never talk about it again. But mm -hmm. that's not the way that, you know it should be open communication, which I I was really I impressed agree. with yeah. what you did. And I think that the first step towards really talking about that is to get Disney on the record about it. And I, yeah, I always found it interesting, you know, that the, there were certain things within Mickey that everybody kind of knew, but we weren't allowed to say or something. And it, it just, it just was really bizarre. And I just felt like if I was going to do a Mickey documentary, I, it was important to talk about that stuff. You know, now I don't know, obviously I'm not the person to lead that conversation, but I can start that conversation through this film. And, you know, I have a daughter. There's super inappropriate stuff in an early animation. Oh, it's big time. completely insensitive. And can I just, you know, I hope that that gets reckoned with and gets talked about. So I just wanted to kind of get it on record. I felt like the work of the film in terms of some of the stuff that, you know, is in there was to just kind of get Disney on the record about it. You know, I always found that thing where they sued the daycare center to be so weird it's oh, like it's so funny you know, mention like, that because we have that in philly it's a symbol <laughs> still the same thing. <laughs> like what are you doing you know and so is there any better shorthand for he had lost his way and the corporation had lost their way with him than mm -hmm. that moment you know um and so you know if you're doing a documentary uh about mickey mouse for disney you better be clear from the get go about what you want to talk about and make sure you can do that. So that I was you know, very impressed. It was important to me. And also just on other levels too, just some of the images that had been done with Mickey, uh, the Milton Glaser short about Vietnam, yes. um, things like that. I just think are really wonderful, beautiful, interesting, artistic uses of Mickey. And they speak to Mickey as being part of us. And we all understand it because it is Mickey because we understand Mickey. So it's why wouldn't I include that stuff, you know? Um, and I will give credit to Disney for, for allowing us to do that. Whereas in the past, I don't it's think it's been would... like a don't talk about. This yeah. Yeah. Which right. was always, I found odd. And, and I, I, it's a great, it's a great opening door for that. So I was really impressed by that. And it was, it was so great for you to show, you know, what Mickey items there might've been and what popular things there were. So I have five items um, that I wanted to hear what your personal opinion what, were okay, of, of Mickey. So here we go. Okay. So the first one is um, the most famous, the pal Mickey that used to be at the at Walt Disney World where you'd go around and press a button and he would actually interact or know what attraction you were in front of. Did, oh, do, you, wow. do you remember this one? No, I think that's looks like RIF. What do you call it? Like it was I was too old by this time because um, this would be like. RFID technologies. It's like a nineties thing. It's like around 2002. Okay. It was so popular. I, I, I just remember Yeah. I kid. remember hearing the thing, pal Mickey. That's really interesting. Wow. And a lot of people were trying to bring it back to see if like the little um, sensor <laughs> points would work, but they yeah. don't work anymore apparently. So. Wow. Shucks. Oh, that's too bad. They should have kept it going. That's I know. I think it was a, it was a fun idea. So yeah, no, it's a super fun idea. That's great. You, okay. you said you had one. And, oh, I know. I never had one. Oh, okay. But I did. I did play Toontown. So this is Toontown Online, where you could go to Goofy, Donald, Daisy, Minnie, and Mickey's house, and uh, defeat the the cogs, as they call them, the the businessmen. Yeah. And it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, there's some of that in Epic Mickey. Do you know that video game? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, it was on the oh, Wii. We played that a little bit later. We're like, oh, look, they're kind of like redeveloping it into yeah. Epic Mickey. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> fun and kingdom hearts everybody is into kingdom hearts i wish it would have made the film it's there's so much stuff to get in there and i just it was so tough but yeah kingdom hearts is seems really cool so confusing but <laughs> <laughs> i used to play the games but i'm still confused about right it. Right. But I love it. <laughs> yeah, totally. How about Runaway Brain? I was actually surprised you didn't include it. I this. know. I was surprised too. It's amazing what doesn't make it. 
Yeah, it's you tough know? because you I have mean, to cut it down to a certain amount of time, which I totally get. Well, it's um, funny. By the time Runaway Brain shows up, it's sort of like we've kind of like taken all – what I love about Runaway Brain is it's sort of meta-commentating on where Mickey is at that time. And yes. that he's not allowed to be an adventurer anymore and all these things. It's sort of speaking directly to that like frozen Mickey period. And by the time Runaway Brain shows up, it's like we know all of that. So every we cut scenes about Runaway Brain. I think it's one of my favorites. I think it's so smart and so fun and um, really just well done on every level. And, I love uh, it. Yeah, definitely my, one of my favorite. My dad stories. says we have a 16 millimeter print still of it. Oh, cool. No dad. way. <laughs> wow. Jeff, he's really hardcore. We'll, we'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> I know he he was he says it's terrific. It is. It's it's actually it's very dark. I remember watching it as a kid, and it maybe it was the same print, Dad. I was trying to remember if you had sold it or not, but I remember watching that and the Roger Rabbit cartoons because they were all pretty dark. You know yeah. what I mean? And they weren't yeah. they weren't it had like that Roger would... Rabbit kind of vibe to it. Yes, which I love. Sure. So okay, yeah. and then one more, the infamous. Uh, Mickey Sorcerer Hand at Epcot for it was originally for the Millennium Celebration and stayed for a long time. I liked it. A lot of people did not. <laughs> what yeah. did you think, Jeff? <laughs> I liked it to the point where I remember trying to get a shot of it into that sequence where uh, Mickey is kind of lost and and we're sort of we're using that really great music uh, that Money Mark did. And I remember trying to get a shot of this into the because I always thought it was so cool. I know. Um, but people had people had issues with it. Oh, they did not like it. There it is. He's a little vinyl nation. They wow. made like special Great. ones. I had to get one, but they did not like it. They were like it. It ruined what Epcot the ball originally was from '82. So I'm somebody who loves the Millennium Celebration, but a lot of people are like retro Epcot all the way with Dreamfinder and Figment. I'm like, I totally understand, but I actually liked it. So yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> But there you go. There was there was some good. I, I was just wondering what your thoughts were because you have been you have been had so much Mickey. Well, it's funny because you picked <laughs> a couple of the things that almost made the film but didn't. So it's like you're right there because it's yeah. It's always interesting what you cut out. Sometimes that stuff can be just as good or even strangely on its own a little better than the movie, but it just doesn't fit the. The sort the, the of story. tyranny of, of this ride that you're going on. You know? Which is understandable. I was actually yeah. really happy you included the the Mickey Christmas, um, uh, the special, the film. Yeah. And because I, I miss, I think the last time I remember Mickey being on film was the the Three yeah. Musketeers. Yeah. And I really, I love that. I have a picture of us actually with Mickey when the movie came out with Mickey, Goofy, and Donald dressed yeah. as the Musketeers at Epcot. So that's but, cool. You know, I hope I hope they do another Mickey movie. I, I'm still wondering, Jeff. Maybe you might have the answer. When will Mickey propose to Minnie? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. We'll probably yeah. never know. But uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm just so glad you came on the show. And I just want to remind our listeners that you can go ahead and watch on Disney Plus Mickey: The Story of a Mouse. It's a wonderful documentary. You should all see it if you're your big Disney fans, which most of them, my listeners are. And uh, Jeff, congratulations. I, I really enjoyed it. It was wonderful. Thank you. It was really fun to talk to you. I wish everybody came with like stuff to look at. It's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have plenty more where that yeah. came from. I collect Disney. I know, but you've got clips. Crazy. It's like, this is great. It's super I fun. was prepared. I was trying yeah. my best just in case. So, but, well, um, you know, you. if everybody liked the interview, uh, if you'd like to keep up the conversation about this documentary, you know, you could Facebook, tw uh, send me a tweet, Instagram, whatever you'd like to do. My website's www.tam tucky.com and a big thank you to jeff again for being such a good sport <laughs> thank you for having me and remember we'll see you all real soon have a good night bye jeff <laughs> bye see ya <laughs>